December 1st, the Holy Prophet, Nahum. Nahum was born of the tribe of Simeon in a place called Elkosh, on the far side of the Jordan. He lived about 700 years before Christ, and prophesied the destruction of Nineveh about 200 years after the prophet Jonah. Because of Jonah's preaching, the Ninevites had repented, and God had spared them and not destroyed them. In time, however, they forgot God's mercy and again became corrupt. The prophet Nahum prophesied their destruction, and since there was no repentance, God did not spare them. The entire city was destroyed by earthquake, flood, and fire, so that its location is no longer known. Saint Nahum lived for 45 years and entered into rest in the Lord, leaving us a small book of his true prophecies. Saint Philaret the Almsgiver of Amnia in Asia Minor. Philaret was from the village of Amnia in Paphlagonia. Early in life, Philaret was a very wealthy man, but by distributing abundant alms to the poor, he himself became extremely poor. However, he was not afraid of poverty and, not heeding the complaints of his wife and children, he continued his charitable works with the hope in God, who said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Once, while he was plowing in the field, a man came to him and complained that one of his oxen had died in the harness and that he was unable to plow with only one ox. Philaret then unharnessed one of his oxen and gave it to him. He even gave his remaining horse to a man who was summoned to go to war. He gave away the calf of his last cow, and when he saw how the cow pined for her missing calf, and the calf for the cow, he called the man and gave him the cow too. And thus the aged Philaret was left without food in an empty house. But he prayed to God and placed his hope in him. And God did not abandon the righteous one to be put to shame in his hope. At that time, the Empress Irene reigned with her young son, Constantine. According to the custom of that time, the Empress sent men throughout the whole empire to seek the best and most distinguished maiden to whom she could wed her son, the Emperor. By God's providence, these men happened to stay overnight in Philaret's house and they saw his most beautiful and modest granddaughter, Maria, the daughter of his daughter, Hypatia, and took her to Constantinople. The emperor was well pleased with her, married her, and moved Philaret and all his family to the capital, giving him great honors and riches. Philaret did not become proud as a result of this unexpected good fortune, but thankful to God, he continued to perform good works even more than he had before and thus he continued until his death. At the age of ninety, he summoned his children, blessed them, and instructed them to cleave to God and to God's law. And with his clairvoyant spirit, he prophesied to all of them how they would live out this life, as once had Jacob. After that, he went to Rodolphia Monastery and gave up his soul to God. At his death, his face shone like the sun, and after his death, an unusual sweet fragrance came forth from his body, and miracles took place at his relics. This righteous man entered into rest in the year 797. His wife, Theosevia, and all his children and grandchildren lived a God-pleasing life and reposed in the Lord. Hymn of Praise to St. Philaret, the Almsgiver To the merciful one, God shows mercy. He never ceases to show mercy. He hears the prayers of the merciful, and gives gifts a hundredfold. Philaret the Merciful placed himself wholly in God's hands. By his compassion he amazed the world. He was faithful to God, even in suffering. Philaret did not compete for honor or precedence. We use this age to purchase the eternal kingdom and blessedness. The Lord spoke a wondrous word, Trade until I return. When the time is right, I will repay you with great riches. When Philaret became impoverished because of almsgiving beyond measure, because of truth and goodness, God visited him from on high, visited him and bestowed mercy, bestowed mercy and rewarded him, just as once upon the faithful Jacob he bestowed mercy and a reward. Reflection Virtue is like a thirst. 
When a man begins to drink of it, he becomes more thirsty and seeks to drink of it all the more. He who begins to exercise the virtue of compassion knows no measure and acknowledges no limit. St. Philaret was no less generous when he was impoverished than when he was wealthy. When his granddaughter became empress, he became a rich man once again, but no less generous. One day he told his wife and children to prepare the best feast that they could and said, Let us invite our king and lord with all his noblemen to come to the feast. Everyone thought that the old man was thinking of inviting to dinner his son-in-law, the emperor, and they all worked as hard as they could and prepared the feast. Meanwhile, Philaret went around the streets and gathered all the needy, the beggars, the blind, the outcasts, the lame and the infirm, and brought them to the feast. Placing them at the table, he ordered his wife and sons to serve at the table. After the feast was completed, he put a gold coin in the hand of each guest and dismissed them. Then everyone understood that by the king he meant the Lord Christ himself, and by the noblemen he meant beggars and those in need. He also said that one need not look at the money that one gives to beggars, but rather one should mix up the money in one's pocket and give only what the hand removes from the pocket. The hand will draw out whatever God's providence ordains. Contemplation Contemplate the sinful fall of Adam and Eve. Genesis 3 1. How Eve, when she sinned, did not repent, but hurried to make her husband a participant in her sin. 2. How Adam, when he sinned, did not repent, but justified himself, blaming his wife before God. 3. How even today many sinners seek fellow participants in their sin and justify themselves by blaming others. Homily on the Creation of the World Quote, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Unquote. Genesis 1.1 1, 1. Brethren, this is God's answer through the mouth of the prophet, the answer to the question that we all thirst to know. Whence comes this world? God hears our question, spoken or unspoken. He hears and gives an answer. Just as He gives rain to the dry earth, just as He gives health to a sick person, just as He gives bread and clothing to the body, so also does He give an answer to our spirit. He gives an answer to the question that has caused it hunger and thirst, pain and nakedness, until it, the spirit, is nourished and quenched restored to health, and is clothed with the true answer. This is the question. Whence therefore comes this world? This is the answer. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. This world is not of itself. Just as nothing in this world is of itself, neither is this world of an evil power. Neither is this world of many creators, good and evil, but rather it is of the one gracious God. This answer evokes joy in the heart of every man and incites him to good works. And by this we know, among other things, that this is the only correct and true answer. Every other answer, in contradiction to this, evokes sorrow and fear in us and incites us to evil works, and therefore we know, among other things, that such answers are false. Brethren, the world is from God. Let us rejoice and be glad. The world is of divine origin, and consequently its end will also be in God. The world is of a good root, and consequently it will bring forth good fruit. It proceeded from the chamber of light, and it will end in light. When we know that the beginning is good, then we know that it tends toward good, and that the end will be good. Behold, in these words about the beginning, the prophecy about the end is already hidden. As was the beginning, so also will be the end. He from whom the beginning came, in him also is the end. Therefore, let us hold fast to this saving truth, that we may have shining hope and be strengthened in love toward the one who out of love created us. O Lord God, our almighty creator, one God, one creator, the good source of goodness, thee do we worship, to thee do we pray. Direct us to the good end by thy Holy Spirit, through the Lord Jesus Christ. To thee be glory and praise forever. Amen.